The last video I made on this topic was simply a very loose scratching of the surface when it comes to surveillance. Surveillance is so much bigger than any of us could even comprehend. To recap my last video about surveillance, essentially, it's everywhere. Walk down the street, look up at a shop front, train station, supermarket, basically anywhere you can think of, there is more than likely some form of surveillance going on. Anyway, getting ahead of myself. Hello, hello, how does it go? Welcome back to yet another video. It's great to see you here. So while I've got your attention, please hit that like button. Press that subscribe button if you enjoy my content. It is free. And if you enjoy the video, please leave a like and comment. Oh, hello there. It's voiceover me. I bet you didn't think I had this one in me, did ya? Now, let's look at surveillance in a different light. As a seesaw. Let's consider this plank of wood to be surveillance as a whole, and the foam roller that it's sitting on, aka the pivot, as society. Now that surveillance is balancing on society, let's consider this side to be good surveillance, and this side to be bad surveillance. Now, I use those terms rather loosely, as the idea of something being good or bad is an objective decision. Now let's consider these pots as different forms of surveillance in different contexts. You see that one pot in one spot tips the seesaw in its direction as there is not a different form of surveillance to level it out. The only way to level it out is by having another form of surveillance on the other side of the seesaw. This is the only way that our surveillance society stays fair and balanced. Now returning you to Toby back in the chair. And we're back. Now, let's have a look at a few examples, shall we? CCTV is an example of visual surveillance that also happens to be the most common form of surveillance in the world. In a 2005 book written by Martin Gill and Angela Spriggs, both of whom were slash are members of the University of Leicester's criminology department, Gill and Spriggs state that closed-circuit television cameras, CCTV, have become an important crime prevention and security measure. Which, if you were to ask the general public, many would agree with that statement, even 15 years later now that technology is even more state-of-the-art. In Welsh and Farrington's 2002 review, it was discovered that while CCTV saw a reduction in observed crime, it was rather insignificant with only a 6% reduction of observed crime in experimental areas compared to the control areas. The 6% reduction of observed crime demonstrates that while CCTV does assist in the reduction of the crimes observed, it is more likely to not even matter to the person committing the crime. This, however, changes when looking at enclosed places such as car parks, which have a 41% reduction of observed crime in experimental versus controlled areas. Another form of surveillance that is quite possibly looked down upon by members of the general public is the surveillance that comes from these. The mobile telephone. Any phone that has a connection to a data network, whether it be from an ISP or telco, is trackable. Any time you allow the location services to be active on your phone, you're able to be tracked. And up until quite recently, telcos would sell this information to shady third-party companies. Selling data is an example of the bad surveillance that I mentioned earlier. If we go back to the idea of the seesaw, you can see the good surveillance in the form of CCTV and the bad surveillance of location selling even each other out and we are left with a perfectly balanced seesaw. This seesaw gives a visual representation of the surveillance society that we live in. Perfectly balanced. This seesaw gives a visual representation of the surveillance society that we live in. Perfectly balanced. There may be a lot of surveillance and we may be used to that, but overall, the comparison of good to bad surveillance forms is pretty much balanced at a one-to-one -one ratio. Granted, there is still a bit of a grey area between the two, due to personal opinions, but 
relatively, there is an equal amount of good and bad surveillance forms. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's deeper look into surveillance, and I really hope you may have learnt a thing or two. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a huge thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, it's free, and follow me on my socials. You can find my sources in the description of the video, and also the licensing for all of the Creative Commons material that was featured. As always, I've been Toby, it's been great having you here, and I hope you have a great day. Goodbye.